the smartphone has become a, a big problem. And uh, so I've, we've, we've been experimenting on our children uh, for many <laughs> years now. And of course, the oldest gets the gets at the sure, most Sure, they're difficult. always the guinea pig. So, so um, just so your listeners know, as a homeschool dad, that we've been very countercultural and we don't feel like we have to keep up with the Joneses. I'm going to mm. answer to God for my family, not everybody else's. Right. And you're not going to answer for my family. Hey everyone, this is Yvette Hampton. Welcome back to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. I am back today for the conclusion of my conversation with Philip Telfer. We are having a good time talking about uh, this crazy digital age that we're living in, um, all of the complications and, and problems that could come with our kids holding these computers in their hands all the time. Uh, but we don't want to talk just about the problems. We want to talk about solutions as well. And, you know, as always, we always want to point you guys to Jesus and help you point your kids to Jesus. In the, I think it was the first episode, Philip, you talked about the importance of parents setting that example yes. for our kids. And, and I think that really is where it starts because we can tell them all day long, this is what you should do. But if we're not doing it ourselves, it's really hard for them to comply. You know, yes. I mean, they're like, well, okay, but you're on your phone all day long or you're on your computer all day long. And, um, and there are times when, you know, I know for myself, I'm actually working because I, I work, you know, we do this schoolhouse rocked ministry. And so throughout the day, I'm having to send emails and I'm having to make phone calls and answer phone calls. And, and there's a lot going on where our, our movie is about to come out. I mean, there's so much going on right now. So legitimately, most of the time I'm actually working and not just chit chatting with friends, though I would love to spend time doing that. But I often really have to catch myself and think, okay, is what I'm doing right now really more important than what my children need from me at this moment. Um, and so I, I, I keep coming back to like, I, I just need a, a time frame, you know, a block of time where this would be my phone time or my computer time throughout the day. And um, have you found that, do you do that? Or have you found that to be a helpful thing? Yeah. So there's uh, there's something called the myth of multitasking. Huh? And so there's no, you, you really can't multitask complex, you know, processes. You, you can walk and chew gum at the same time, but the, neither of those are, are very complex. Right. <laughs> but uh, what, what, the research has found is that when let's just take texting and driving and why there's so many accidents and what's so dangerous and many states have outlawed it is because um, you you can't actually text and drive at the same right. time. It's a myth that you can multitask. Sure. So what it's called is rapid task switching. Hmm. So when you look down at your phone, you're no longer looking at the road. You're driving blind. And you look back up and you're no longer looking at your phone. So they, they call that rapid task switching. We do it really well, except that there's something called a switching cost. And so if you, you realize every time you switch, there's a, there's a switching cost that you're going to pay. So if you can have a block of time where you focus your attention on one thing, uh, you'll actually be more productive than constantly switching your focus mm -hmm. uh, because you're distracted. Um, now, it doesn't mean that you're staying focused on one thing for eight hours. That would be like working in a factory. That would be pretty excruciating. And for a person like me, I'm more on the creative side. I like to, I like to block things out. I'm going to focus my attention uh, for a certain amount of time. And then when my, especially since I'm doing a lot of writing and reading and thinking, sometimes the thinker gets a little tired. And so then it's like, okay, I need to switch to busy work, you know, mm -hmm. so let me go staple papers or something, you know, go clean my office for the next hour. So definitely uh, having that focus. But when it comes to parenting and, and focused parenting, I want to encourage parents to, to be shepherds and not merely fence builders. And let me explain that. I, you know, I'm, I've lived both in rural and urban areas. I grew up in a rural area. But there was a time as a family that we were living on a small farmette and I was raising a flock of sheep. We okay. had about a dozen uh, sheep and I was not a shepherd to my sheep. I was a fence builder. Uh, so I made sure my fences were strong and that my sheep had food and water and I'd come and check on them at least once a day. That's not the way we're to parent. Right. So when we think about shepherds um, that even that exist to this day, I was in Africa a few years ago, um, speaking and, and one of the things when we were even in Nairobi, you see it, but you get out of the city and you, you see these little flocks of animals everywhere. 
but there's always a shepherd. There's no fences. They're in the open range, but there's always, it was almost like, where's Waldo? You know, you could mm-hmm. you'd see the animals and then you'd start looking and you would, you would look and you'd find a shepherd somewhere um, in close proximity. So God's called us to be shepherds in our home, dads in particular, but dads and moms both play this role of being the shepherd in the home. And that means you are present. Mm-hmm. So you're not just, so when I talk about making strong fences, that's just creating rules. Rules are important. I believe in rules in a household, sure. but that's not the, that's not the ultimate solution to training your children. They need your presence. They need you to walk through life with them. And you don't have, I mean, like now I've got one out of the house. I've got one that's close to that and getting ready to launch and it happens so quick. And so yeah. you, you need to spend, you need to focus that time to say, you know, I need to help. I need to walk through life. I need to be a shepherd. I need to live with the sheep. I need to be present. And so, you know, in one example of this, which is another little life hack here for regaining focus is uh, entertainment in community. That is a simple little principle. So, for example, I don't allow my family just to go scattering like roaches, you know, uh, to every little nook and cranny of the house with their devi- with devices mm-hmm. to all do their own thing. Right. We experience entertainment together as a family. Yeah. And this is even to the point of music. So, for example, I, I this is just me. Some of these things are description, not necessarily prescription. But sure. you know, um, I I don't allow earbud headphones. Or my kids don't listen to music on headphones. We have some home pods. We have speakers, and and I gave them. I give them a lot of liberty, as long as it's Christian music. Sure. And uh, they, um, but they play it, and we all we all take turns on who's who's got control over the speaker right now. And because we've just developed this, this uh, mode in our household that we were going to uh, consume entertainment in community, then, then mom and dad is present. And this is the case for movies. I like to, you know, I like just like anybody else to sit down and watch a good movie, but I want to do that with my family. And then we can walk through, we can talk about issues. We can navigate the, the things that we're hearing and seeing and but you can't do that if you're not present. So that's just one simple little step that you can you can take. Sure. And another part of shepherding your family is like have at least one meal time where it's device free and you're all around the table together. Oh yeah. And that the table is not just for for eating, it's for leading your family. And so that's a time to to connect on a deeper level. But you're going to have to be disciplined and and Everybody's got to work together to make sure we have a meal that we yep. can all coordinate our schedules to get around that table and that we all put the devices away, turn the no- notifications off and really enjoy that time. We also do something. We I'm, I'm a coffee fanatic. Um, it's kind of a hobby of mine. I roast coffee and all my kids love drinking coffee. So we, okay. we actually have like coffee time also okay. where we're all just chilling out, drinking yeah. coffee together. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um so I, I've heard of some families and I know that if you actually go on like Pinterest or something, you can find these um, families that do like a cell phone basket and, mm-hmm. you know, maybe when the kids are home, if it's not time for phones or devices, they all go in the basket and, you know, then there's that time where it's okay to take them out and, you know, check text messages and, and things like that. Um, but there are some really fun ideas, even for those things that you can find if you just do a simple search for it. And not that you have to have a basket, but you know, it just makes it yes. a little bit more intentional when you do that. Um, I want to go back to how we, um, what we ended the last episode on, and we were talking about replace versus take away and not just taking away our kids' phones, but replacing them with things. And so you gave a couple of ideas and we talked about game schooling and stuff. Did you have any other ideas uh, to throw out there that yeah, we can yeah. replace. Cause, cause that, that's a big thing. I mean, people, people need some ideas here. Yeah. I want to, I want to talk specifically about smartphones because this has become a problem. I've, I've spoken at many conferences and, and I've yet to have parents come up to me to share testimonies, uh, glowing testimonies of how wonderful the smartphone has been in their teenager's life. <laughs> And so I'm not making this up. I'm just, you know, if I heard those testimonies, I'd be glad to share them with you, but I never hear them. Sure. 
Uh, so, so the smartphone has become a, a big problem. And uh, so I've, we've, we've been experimenting on our children uh, for many years now. And of course the oldest gets the, gets at the, sure, most they're difficult. always the guinea pig. So, so um, just so your listeners know as a homeschool dad, that we've been very countercultural and we don't feel like we have to keep up with the Joneses. I'm mm-hmm. going to answer to God for my family, not everybody else's. Right. And you're not going to answer for my family. Sure. So, so I take this seriously. And, and, um, so when, and because of being in a no and a lot of this, the, this subject, uh, my, my oldest daughter did not have a phone until she was 18 years old. Now, that did bother her at times because she was a, the only 18 year old, you know, or 17 year old, a 16 year old that she knew that did not have a phone. Mm-hmm. But what, so that's what we did with her and she survived it. Yeah. And I don't think she has lost any sleep over it since then. She got a phone. She was more, uh, she was more mature, mm-hmm. had greater wisdom. She made good choices. And, and I think it's a, it was, it was a, the right thing for us to do at the time. Sure. Now we've, we've tried to, we've experimented on a couple other things. So my, my younger ones, uh, my three in the house, we began to, I took one of my older phones and I set up a family plan. Uh, I use Verizon, but any, any service has something similar where you can set up the phone as like a child's phone where the parent has control over it. They can't download an app without getting uh, permission and then, but they, but my three teens share one phone and, uh, that provides a lot of accountability between mm-hmm. them because you can't really hide stuff, especially if you got Snoopy sisters, sisters. Sure. So you're, <laughs> you're, um, so they, they share a phone and it's whoever really, you know, so maybe my daughter's going to karate, she needs a phone or my son's driving somewhere. He needs the phone. Uh, but they, but they have to share that. And so we have that, that phone pretty locked down on what it can actually do, but it is an iPhone. And, and there are a lot of tricks that you can learn. We don't have time to go into the details there, but if you're a sure. sa- if you're not savvy, you need to become savvy. Sure. Don't, if, if, if you're, if you're not savvy, do not give your child a phone, a yeah. smartphone. I mean, that's just ridiculous. You're going to have to become savvy, Sure. but here's another, so here's the third option, which has been fantastic. And that is, and I'm uh, give a disclosure because I'm so, I'm such a fan of this I've become an advocate for them and I would be an advocate even if there was no contribution that they would give me as a, as a nonprofit ministry uh, for pitching it, but it's called Gab phone, G A B B. So Hmm. Gab phone, this is a new company that it is family. They have the family in mind. And so they've developed a, it's an Android based smartphone that does not connect to the internet. It only calls, you can text. So you, you know, you can take a picture. Uh, In fact, they have two, two different plans. So you, you can even take the lesser plan where you can't even send or receive a picture via text, or you can, if you, you feel like you can trust your children to do that, you can set the amount of, um, the contacts and it's there. The phones are cheap. The service is cheap. And so, um, I will give a plug because I, i I would plug it no matter what, but if you yeah. do decide to get one, <clears throat> use the code media one Oh one, because okay. you'll get a discount. You'll get, uh, I don't remember what's 10%, 20%, maybe even 30% discount. Oh, wow. But then, then, then also a portion of that uh, sale will actually benefit our nonprofit organization. Okay. So, but, that, but that's great. So I'm at, that's uh, my 14-year-old has the Gab phone. Okay. And, it, and so she, it's not a distraction because you yeah. just can't do anything with right. it. Yeah, but, it yeah, but a, she can but still communicate. But with it looks friends. like a smartphone, you know. Right, right. Yeah, that's awesome. So she still looks super cool. That's right. Yeah, you, know? <laughs> you don't have to look like you're old school. Right. That's awesome. Let's take a quick break. We'll be right back. Are you looking for a fantastic online math program that removes the burden of teaching math? Then Teaching Textbooks is for you. Our family's been using teaching textbooks for years and we couldn't be happier. Our girls say that it makes learning math fun, like a game, and they love that it's interactive. Teaching Textbooks uses step-by-step video instruction and does all the grading for you. The newest version is available now with an app that even works offline. Sign up for the first 15 lessons for free at teachingtextbooks.com. That's teachingtextbooks.com. We are back with Philip Telfer. I want to ask you one last question um, in in regards to um, kind of replacing 
phones and phone time um, with other things and setting some restrictions with our kids. Um, and then I want to talk about some of your books that you have. And, and I definitely want to talk about Captivated, um, your documentary that you produced. Um, one of the things that, that I can see easily happening is if our kids have had phones for quite some time and then we try to take them away, that that rebellion is going to rise up in them. And they're yep. going to be like, whoa, wait, what do you, what do you think you're doing? And that's certainly something that, you know, we, we don't want to have to fight that battle with them. So how can a parent deal with the possibility of their children becoming angry and rebellious for setting strict guidelines or even removing phone time from them? Yes. Well, th that is, that's a serious subject and, it, and it's, and it's one that we need to handle with care. Uh, there's actually a, another book I would recommend. It's a secular book, but it's called Glow Kids by Dr. Nicholas Kadaris. Okay. And uh, so he he talks about that, and he's got some really horror stories of of what's happened when parents have you know taken devices away or or whatever, and and just so it's it's a these are issues. So first thing I need to say for young parents, if you if you don't have teens yet and you have young parents, this is kind of who we kind of geared the documentary captivated for it's like if you can learn these things before and not open doors that you don't have to open mm -hmm. this is going to go much better for you than to open doors too early and then realize this is a problem it, it's much more difficult to close those doors once you've opened them and it takes a lot lot more care uh, so it's better to do the hard work up front now mm -hmm. But as you said, for those you are listening and you, you've got teens, you open the door early, you thought it was a great thing to give them the tech, and now you don't like the fruit and you're realizing uh, this is a big problem. I've got my, my son's been looking at porn. My daughter's addicted to social media. Um, you know, I, I've got to, to, to what, what do I do? Also, this is why when I let my three teens share an iPhone, um, it's not any one of their phone. It's my phone. Mm -hmm. This is my phone. Right. I'm letting you use my phone. And so this makes a difference. You should never give a child a phone. You should never give them ownership of a phone. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but maybe you did, you know, uh, but you're paying the bill. You bought the phone. You're the parent. So when, when you're in those sticky situations, what you have to do is you have to sit down as a family and maybe it's a particular child because every child's different. Maybe you're sitting down with that child. And the first thing you need to do is, is uh, apologize. You need to humble yourself and say, I'm sorry. Um, I should have thought this through a little better. We should have had a better plan in place. I just kind of went along with the current of things and now it's harming you. And it's not, and it's disrupting the family, and we need to all get on the same page together. So we we need to talk this through and come up with a workable solution. And I want to include you in that. Let's let's uh, let's look at the problems that we're having, and let's let's figure out the solution, and let's set some parameters, um, and and see if we can work through this in a mature way that's better. But the, it's best to just start with a humble approach instead of bringing down the hammer, like because it's not your child's fault. Right. You know, I mean, they're, 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 they don't have the wisdom. Right. Adults don't have the wisdom. When you see adults not handling this technology with wisdom, what do you expect a preteen or a teen, yeah. you know, who are going through a lot of issues in their life as it is. So they, they really don't have the wisdom for this. And so uh, that's why you, you really have to then swallow it and just say, I'm, I'm, it's my fault. Yeah. It's not my child's fault. I, I did this. This is, this is my doing. And now I've got to figure out how to carefully get on a better trajectory, but hum humbly doing that is going to, to, and then get, get buy-in and come up with something that's going to work. Now, another thing is to sit down and, and actually Dr. Victoria Dunkley, Victoria Dunkley talks about this in her book about replacing, you know, you, you like have to really think this through ahead of time. So uh, let me just tell a little story. It has nothing to do with technology, sure. but, but it's one that I experienced in my life. I was a rebellious teen, gave my parents a lot of trouble, turned them into prayer warriors. And by God's grace, I came to the Lord Jesus Christ at the age of 17. But until that time, I was very 
lost and very rebellious. And at the time, you know, it, the 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 peace symbol, you know, which we're familiar with from the '60s, from the mm -hmm. hippie days, it was it was um, in vogue again. And I remember because I'd always been in arts and crafts, I'd actually crafted one in from silver uh, in shop class, and I used to wear it. And my dad, who's um, veteran and served in the army during the Vietnam War, even though he was not, he was sent to Germany and not Vietnam. That symbol is very deeply offensive to him, mm -hmm. you know, so we were already not getting along. So that really caused a lot of sure. <laughs> tension. <laughs> and, uh, but I remember as a, as a Christian dad, him, uh, doing something he replaced versus just take away. So he mm -hmm. sat down with me one day and he, and he, and he just had a heart to heart talk. He says, Philip, you probably don't know how offensive that symbol is to me. Let me give you some background and let me share why that symbol bothers me every time I see it around your neck. And he said, so um, now that you know this, uh, I want to let you know, I went out and I bought you an, another necklace. And this is also, a, this is the real symbol of peace. And it was a dove and oh, wow. uh, it was a little silver dove on a nice manly chain. And he said, I would like to make a trade with you. Will you trade with me? Hmm. And uh, so he he traded that that necklace and and I was very touched even though I was like very embittered generally right. and angry <laughs> against my dad I'm like I couldn't I w it's like so I'm this is a rebellious teen who kind of hated his dad at the time and was rebellious and I was just wow how what can I say to that right, and right. I, so I actually wore that with pride yeah and um, I say oh my you know and kids would ask me what well what's that about oh, my yeah. dad gave me this you know. It means peace, yeah, and uh, and it was unique because nobody else had one. Right. So, um, so yeah, so you you really do have to be creative as a parent and figure out what what's it going to take to to do this together. Get mm -hmm. the buy in, yeah. have the tough. Those are tough conversations, but yeah. you got to have them. Yeah, and and it's something that husband and wife, mom and dad, need to talk about together, um, and and be on the same page together, yes. you know, definitely. I, I can't imagine, you know, dad saying this and mom's not in agreement or vice versa. It, it could cause even more conflict and strain in the, the family relationships. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, it's something that definitely I do have, needs to take I, prayer. By the way, there, I do have a, it's, there's an MP3 on our website, mediatalk101.org. You could find it in the store. Um, I rotate free ones. So I don't know if, I, I don't know presently if it is free, I'll go back and, and I'll maybe before this airs, I'll make sure that it's, it is a free resource, but it's uh, called handle with care. Okay. And it, it does, it's about conflicts in the home regarding media and entertainment. And it deals with conflicts between husband and wife, parents okay. and children, parents and adult children, and then family with extended family. Okay. And so, and it's not comprehensive. It's just kind of looking at some of these, these challenges and that was a, a, a recording from a homeschool conference. So okay. that's a that's a resource that you could go look at. Yeah, for, awesome. Yeah. Well, we'll put a link to that for sure. Um, I feel like we could talk so much longer about this, but we are out of time. And so in the last few minutes, I want to talk really quickly about, you've mentioned a couple of times your uh, documentary, Captivated. Tell us really quickly about that. When did that come out? And just give yeah, us so kind of a spent, synopsis of that. I spent all of 2011, a whole year, making that documentary, and it was released in 2012. Um, and there are some things that are going to be a little bit dated. I mean, we talk about Farmville on Facebook, you know, which uh -huh. <laughs> is not so much of a deal. But for the most part, it's had a very long shelf life and is still applicable. And uh, you can, you know, you can find that at mediatalk101.org okay. or philiptelfer.com, or we have a dedicated website, Captivated the Movie. Dot com. I did recently put the, we have a, a feature length version, which is an hour and 47 minutes. And then, and the DVD has two hours of bonus features, which are fantastic. Okay. But I have a 60 minute broadcast version. And I recently put that up on um, our Facebook pages. So the captivated as well as the media talk 101. So you could go and find that and watch that for free. We used to have it up on okay. Amazon prime. And so I used to just send people, hey, go watch it on Amazon if you've got Amazon Prime, but it got pulled from Amazon ah. this last year. So okay. um, it's I don't have a convenient, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm working on a, a page here pretty soon that you can just watch it for free on our website. So okay. that's coming, okay. coming very soon. So right now people can find it, you said, on your Facebook page? Yeah. So, so you can watch the 60-minute version. And then if you want to order the DVD, that's available. Okay. Um, 
So, and, and then you can actually order a digital copy of it off of the Captivated. So CaptivatedTheMovie.com. You, okay. we, we have the entire documentary, the feature length version okay. that you can rent or purchase digitally. Okay. Okay. That's awesome. And then you have a couple of books out as well. Yeah. And let me, before I talk about those, there's a couple of free resources too oh, sure. that I like to give out to homeschool families. Homeschool in people love free stuff. <laughs> yeah. So I have two, two short eBooks. One's called how to thrive as a family in the digital age. Okay. And another one called seven considerations in the age of video games. And the easiest way to access those is the mediatalk101.org store. Okay. So right now I've, I've got those resources. They're just downloadable eBooks for free. Okay. They are available in print. You know, you can find them on Amazon or on Kindle, but if you want the, if you just want the free um, electronic version, you can get that um, at our, our store. Okay. Great. But the the book that you mentioned, so the, the the kind of my classic book is called Media Choices, Convictions or Compromise, and it's um, available on Amazon or in our store. Okay. It's uh, on Kindle as well, but it's it was written for youth and their parents on just growing in media discernment, and it's a story driven. Um, non-fiction book, but it, you know, I really believe a spoonful of sugar makes the minutes, helps the medicine to go down. So you, uh, the, the, it's every chapter short and there's some sort of story and analogy to hopefully bring, bring the, um, emphasis in, you know, to kind of touch the heart. So I've gotten good response, but my most recent book, which I'm very excited about is a, is my first novel. And it's a young adult novel. And the reason I wrote in that young adult novel is because my kids are readers and yeah. it's hard to find good Christian yes, it really fiction. Is. And I wish there were, there was more. Yeah. So, so I decided I'm going to set out and I'm going to do, I'm going to try to write a novel. And uh, this was a long journey, but it's called why save Alexander. And it's about a 17 year old teen who uh, wants to become a pro gamer but really actually needs to grow up. And he, um, he aspires to, to be a pro, but he finds himself in a foreign culture without a power grid and has to actually fight for his life and discover whether or not all these gaming skills actually help in the real world. Uh -huh. And so it's an action adventure. I wanted to write a book that boys would also enjoy, but okay. boys and girls okay. as well as adults have, have, given me a lot of positive feedback on my first novel. That one is available once again on our website or on Amazon. There's also an audio. So if you like audio books, okay. you can find it on Audible. Okay. Do you and read it? I do read it. Okay. Yes. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. And it's called Why, Why Save, Save Alexander? Alexander. Okay. Perfect. Oh, those are, that's amazing. We will for sure put links to all of those things on the website as well. So people can find those. Um, and then Media Talk 101 really quickly explain what that is. Yeah. Media Talk 101. I began this ministry back in 2005. I had spent two years uh, starting in 2003 speaking for another organization nationally. So I was traveling the country, speaking to youth groups and churches. And then that organization came to a close and kind of left a hole. So I um, launched Media Talk 101 as a, as a way to continue uh, speaking about this subject, as well as producing materials and training other speakers. And so we've been around for, for quite a while and okay. can, and are looking forward to our next resource that will be hopefully ready by fall is our first online course for teens okay. on having a balanced media diet. Yeah. Awesome. Very cool. We'll link all of those things. Um, Philip, thank you so, so much for your time this week and just for your wisdom and encouragement that you have brought. I know it's been a, a really great conversation for me, um, very convicting in a lot of ways and uh, so much wisdom. So I really appreciate your time. Well, thank yeah. you, Yvette. This has been great. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you guys for listening. We love you. We pray for you. Let us know how we can encourage you, how we can pray for you. Send us an email at 
podcast at schoolhouserocked.com. And please make sure to share this with your friends. We all have friends who are dealing with the same things that we're dealing with. This is, this is real life, you guys. So share this podcast with your friends as well. And if you've not yet signed up for our newsletter, do that at schoolhouserocked.com. So you can stay in the loop on what's going on when the movie's coming out, um, you know, what podcasts we have coming up, all of those good things. So we will um, encourage you in any way we can. Thank you for listening. We will see you back here on Monday with another fantastic guest. Until then, have a great day. Bye-bye.